and welcome to another episode of the Kid Stories Podcast. I'm Phil Bechtel. Let's get into some shout-outs. Theo shared an awesome drawing of a gloop soldier and a tree beast. Great stuff, Theo. I think if you were a character in the stories, you would be a kid wizard with a good gloop sidekick, and you would teach the gloop magic as you roamed the countryside doing good deeds. Thanks for listening, Theo. And Avery from Cleveland, Tennessee shared an awesome drawing of a robot. That was great, Avery. I think if you were a character in the stories, you would be a flame-handed ninja whose fists could burst into flames during combat. Thanks for listening, Avery. Today's episode is titled, The Dangers of Reading, Part 3. Dylan, William, and now Bridget flew through the air, trying their best to keep up with Kalin. Kalin was clearly faster than them. She probably had more experience flying since she was a wizard's apprentice, and the other kids came from a place where people couldn't just eat a magic crystal and suddenly fly. The kids all looked back in a bit of a panic and saw knights on horseback and wizards flying through the air after them. Kalin led them over plains and into a thick forest of huge trees. Eventually, she landed, and the group continued on foot. They soon came to a place in the forest where large stones stuck up from the ground at all angles. These moss-covered stones stood as high as 50 feet in the air, towering over the kids. Kalin walked on a skinny path among these stones, and they were surrounded on all sides by the high stone walls. Finally, Kalin stopped. Bridget, Dylan, and William poked around from behind her and saw a door. Just a door. It stuck up from the ground and wasn't attached to any of the big rocks or anything else. Dylan walked behind the door. Uh, I think somebody took your house. Nah, it's still there. We just need to go inside, Kalin said. Kalin opened the door, and the others peeked inside. They saw the inside of a house. It's a magic house, said Kalin. Come on inside, hurry up. Everyone followed Kalin inside, and she took William's backpack and dumped it out onto the table. Everything she stuffed in there from the wizard's laboratory in the castle spilled out. A stack of papers, old-fashioned pens, magic powders, and a couple spell books. I'm going to try and make a new book, Kalin began as she organized the items on her table. This one should send you back home. How long is that going to take? Bridget asked. There's a lot of people after us. It'll take a little while. Magic isn't easy, you know, said Kalin. But don't worry, this house is pretty well hidden and I'm the only one who knows where it is. Just then, a pounding came from the door of Kalin's secret house. Oh, well, I, I guess they found us, said Kalin. I'll get to work on the book right away. You three hold them off until I can finish. The door is magically locked, but they'll get in eventually, I think. Hold them off? said Dylan. How are we supposed to hold them off? They're knights and wizards and stuff. We're just kids. Kalin took a small pouch from her belt and dumped it out on the table. Crystals tumbled out. Crystals just like the ones that gave them the power of flight. I don't really know what all the colors do, said Kalin, dipping a pen in some magical powder and beginning to write. Just take some and go fight. The kids looked down at the crystals on the table. They were every color you could think of. Red, blue, black, brown, green, yellow, and every shade in between. The kids each popped a red crystal into their mouths and crunched it up. Just like before, it didn't really taste like anything at all. For a moment, the siblings just stood and looked at each other, waiting for something to happen. Then they felt it. A strange knowledge of their new powers. The power of the flame. The power to not just control fire, but to create it. The three held their hands out in front of them and each created a small flame in their palm. I'll get the door, said Dylan. He ran and put his hand on the doorknob. The door was pounding and rumbling from those on the other side trying to get in. Dylan looked back to William and Bridget. They stood with little flames in their palms and nodded to Dylan. He opened the door and before the knights in armor could burst in, William and Bridget thrust their hands out in front of them and unleashed a wave of flames that roared out through the doorway. Flames filled the opening and everyone trying to get in was pushed back by the magic fire coming from Bridget and William's hands. The flames subsided and Dylan rushed out into the forest. Bridget and William followed. The trio were still surrounded on all sides by the tall stones. 
Some armored knights lay before them, groaning, their armor scorched black from the flames. Above them, they saw archers poised on top of some stones and wizards flying through the air. They were completely surrounded. Uh-oh, said William. Flames out! The three of them threw their hands up into the air and wildly shot streams of flame out of each finger. Thirty thin spouts of flame whipped through the air above them, completely out of control. The archers ducked down to avoid the fire. The wizards high above flew into the protection of the trees. The kids weren't really sure how they were going to hold off this group. Sure, they were three kids who could shoot fire, but they were still kids. And there were real armored knights against them, and actual well-trained adult wizards and archers and who knows who else was still on their way from the castle. Everything was getting real, real, real fast. Once the knights began standing up again, they realized that they couldn't fight all these people at the same time. Shooting random flames was good to scatter the attackers, but it wouldn't make for a solid long-term strategy. As the knights rushed back at the kids, they entered Kalin's magic house again and slammed the door shut. Are you done? Dylan asked. Of course not, said Kalin without looking up from her work. By now she had threaded the pages of the book together and was sprinkling some powder on them, but there was more work to be done. Just eat a bunch of crystals, get a bunch of powers, and go hold them off. By now the door to Kalin's house was rattling and bulging, and they could hear shouting and explosions on the other side. Dylan ate a black gemstone, and Bridget ate a green one, and William ate a blue one, and they felt all their powers now. Flight and flame, and now new powers, surged within them. Again, Dylan opened the door and Bridget and William cleared the way by blasting flames. Dylan rushed out first and quickly disappeared into the shadow of a giant stone, as the black crystal gave him the power to walk within the shadows. William followed. He grabbed the armor of the first knight he saw and threw him so high up into the air that he smashed into a wizard and the two fell to the ground. William's blue crystal gave him the power of inhuman strength and Bridget left Colin's magical home, and two armored knights grabbed her by the arms. Bridget struggled to break free, but she had no super strength. Before the knights could drag Bridget out from in front of Colin's magical door, thick vines gathered from the forest floor. Vines as thick as Bridget's arm, and they wrapped around the knights' legs and up to their arms, and they slithered around and around until you could barely see the silver of their armor, and the vines jerked them down to the ground and held them in place. The green crystal had given Bridget power over plants. Dylan popped out of a shadow next to an archer high above on a rock. Before the archer could react, Dylan grabbed the arrows in his quiver and ducked back into another shadow, disappearing entirely. Again and again he snatched the archer's arrows until their quivers were all empty, and they could only look down upon the battle, weaponless and ineffective. William continued tossing knights about like they were stuffed animals and throwing them to try and knock the wizards out of the air. The wizards dodged many of the flying knights and blasted at the kids with magic freezing blasts. As the wizards dodged the flying knights, Bridget would predict their movements and swat at them with tree branches, thwacking them down to the ground. Just when they felt like the tide of battle had turned in their favor, a whole new group of knights and wizards came tromping through the forest. There they are! Get them! The knights shouted, and a new wave of wizards rose up into the sky and postured to begin launching magical attacks from above. There's too many, Dylan said from atop one of the rocks. Get back inside. They all scrambled back into the house, slamming the door shut and hoping it would hold until the book was completed. Kalin was still hunched over the table, putting the finishing touches on the book. There's more out there now, said Bridget. They just keep coming. Okay, done, said Kalin, handing the book to Dylan. This will probably get you back home. Probably, asked Dylan. Well, yeah, probably. I mean, this has never been done before, said Kalin. I had to re-engineer all the spells and everything. Given the circumstances, I think I did pretty well. So there it is. Just start reading it and you should get sucked in just like before. Except this time, you'll get spit out back at your own home. Oh my gosh, we're going back home with powers, said Dylan. 
We're going to be famous. We should start a crime fighting group or something. Nope, said Kalin. The crystal powers are temporary. They're probably already starting to wear off. They should be gone in a few hours. Now hurry up. But we can't leave you here, said William. They're about to bust down the door. You have to come to our world with us. You can live with us. You'll love it. Thanks for the offer, but I've got some people I need to send back to their own worlds before I'm done here, Kalin said. She stepped over to the table nearby and grabbed two handfuls of the colored crystals. She crunched and ate nearly every remaining crystal. Ah, but now you've got a book that'll get you here and a book that'll get you back home, Kalin added. So something tells me I'll see you again. Later. Kalin went to the door and prepared to take on all the queen's forces with her newfound powers. Dylan began reading the new magic book out loud, and Bridget and William looked over his shoulder and read along silently. Just like before, the book pulled them in. They were sucked from this reality and popped into their own, flopping to the ground near the other book, still laying there on the ground. Only this time, the book they used was still in their hands. Dylan quickly stuffed both books in William's bag before they heard, Dylan! William! being yelled by their mom out the back door. We're in so much trouble, whispered Dylan. We were gone for days. Bridget looked confused. You weren't gone for days, you were gone for hours. No, really, it was days, said William. We were there for... Bridget interrupted. Time must work different there. You were just gone for a few hours. Still, long enough to get in trouble, but not that bad. The three walked back up to the house, and Dylan asked, So do you think we should use that book again sometime? You know, to check on Colin or something? William and Bridget didn't answer before they got back up to the house, but all three of them knew this wouldn't be their last trip into the book. The End Thanks for listening, friends. The website is kidstoriespodcast.com. Send all your drawings and things to kidstoriespodcast at gmail.com. Adios.